City of Bridges, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Akershire Stadium. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. about ready to get us going. And with the terrible towels waving wildly, we are underway from Pittsburgh. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. They'll be led out by a third round pick back in 2018 out of Oklahoma State. It's Mason Rudolph. And when Mason Rudolph is on the field, sometimes the scouting reports have to be revised a little bit because often quarterbacks like to throw short to get a rhythm. For Mason Rudolph, he loves the deep fade and he loves the deep post pattern. Anything over the top, those are his favorite shots downfield and that's what gets him comfortable. Uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead, it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Rudolph looking to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he is caught. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards on the play. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up.
Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's the second and eight. From the 50, it's Rudolph. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Rudolph. A short one there to Fryermuth. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. And on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. Deontay Hardy back deep. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I remember when he came out of Wyoming, the big question mark, could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL? I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest. He can roll out and run it. He can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between. He is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. Taken down at the 42. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Throwing now is Allen. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense, and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Allen now looks to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Cook. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? So now on fourth down, Sam Martin on to punt for Buffalo. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. 
A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Rudolph. It's brought in by Harris. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards that time, but a Pittsburgh first. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Two straight runs of five yards, first and ten. I know flashy plays, flashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back, -back, five yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That's what you're gonna need to do against those big receivers. You gotta get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Now a second and 10. Rudolph looking to throw it. That's caught. Allen Robinson. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Rudolph going to throw on third and one. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn it into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, Rudolph. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. The ball on the 32. It's second and two. Harris running straight ahead, and he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Rudolph now to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion.
So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this will remain a scoreless game. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. That's caught by Gabriel Davis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Allen's throw here, take it in by Knox. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Operating from the red zone now, Allen. Looking on the out route, he finds Shakir. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Now a first carry for the brother of Dalvin. It's James Cook. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. So first and goal from the 9-yard line. Here's Allen to throw it. He'll buy some time right. Allen, nifty footwork. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? To the air, Allen. Touchdown! Dawson Knox, a touchdown grab from Josh Allen. And the Bills get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends in a Buffalo touchdown.
After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now it's Rudolph. Oh, he rifles one and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And this one will be brought back to the 22. You look at there at the defensive back who's maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago. I know I question his speed coming into the game, but what he's lost in speed, he's more than made up for it with intellect. And that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and 10. So after the INT, it's Allen. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. <laughs> Cook will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. On the return from his end zone, Godwin Igwebuke. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. They find themselves in a good size hole here, and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Hey! 
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He's got this to Pickens. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now run straight ahead with Warren. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. But you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. From the 41, here's second and five. Going to run the toss here to Harris. And he'll be pretty well stopped at his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Here is third down and four. Back to throw Rudolph. And that is incomplete. Well, certainly it appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from it. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. On fourth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got things going their way early. 14-0 lead and the football, first and 10. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The Bills with the football as we start quarter. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They run again on first down. Cook. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Alex Highsmith simply would not be stopped on that play. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there forcing a loss on that play. They'll come up second and 13. Allen going to throw. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Alex Highsmith making the nice play and getting the sack. That's a step in the right direction defensively here because you're facing this sizable deficit. They're going to need more plays like that. A good sack, though. Good effort there. And what you're hoping is, as you said, a step in the right direction. And that means it's something to build on. So you get the first one, and hopefully that can ignite them. And now they can make a few more plays and get back into this game. So after the sack, Allen and the Bills with work to do on third and long. Back to throw. Allen. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 43. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Now Allen. Going right back to Knox and again a completion. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 33, here's second and a yard. Allen treads him with a stiff arm. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 23. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. down here's the run with Cook and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage Cameron Hayward getting upfield to make the stop the running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half and I don't think it's all been his fault his offensive line hasn't given him much space a loss results there step on that last play because the drive has been strong but now it's second and 12. Now Allen quick slant to Shakir and brought down but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Here's Hallett setting up the screen for Cook. And he showed a nice little juke, but then the window quickly closed. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Cook. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. They'll get a couple of yards on the keeper, but it's going to lead to a fourth down. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. So on fourth down, off goes Allen. On comes Tyler Bass for the Buffalo field goal. The kick by Bass is good, and the Bills will add on to their lead. Yeah. 
so three points on the board as easy a field goal as you're going to get but i can see you shaking your head i love that peripheral vision of yours partner because to me if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six i get it but now even if you run and don't get in you're still setting them up to go a long field 98 99 yard drive how do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but well, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called can go. I think you just called a desperation time. I, I think did. you did. Yeah. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating, to use a boxing analogy. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They hand this off to Harris, and he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. So from the 36 now, first and 10. On the give, it's Warren. He'll get this to about the 38. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. And they'll come up second and seven. On the give, this is Harris. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Well, you hate that defensively. They had him pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on, and that's going to get called every time. A handoff for Warren. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards, and that'll bring up second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Second and seven. They run with Harris. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 
He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills' 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 and a Pittsburgh first. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, Rudolph. Quick completion here to Johnson. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Rudolph. Open man is Johnson. Touchdown, Steelers. A seven-yard touchdown grab, and the Steelers are able to cut into that deficit. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And it's 17-7. That time, a nine-play drive. And in the end, it was Deontay Johnson's touchdown catch to cap the drive. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. The Bills' offense coming out, ready to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Quality coverage that time to slow down has been the main source of offense against them thus far. Got to find a way to slow down that ball in the air. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. To throw, it's Allen. On the slant, he's got Davis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Play action. Now it's Allen. Got a man, that's Trent Sherfield. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field. And that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll try the middle with Cook. 
He takes us for about six down inside the 40. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Here now, second and four. Looking to throw. Allen. Throw right side, caught by Davis. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 24-yard line. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Allen off the play fake. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stephon Diggs. A 24-yard touchdown. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Here's Bass now for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got them pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Daquan Jones fighting his way home to get the sack. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They're not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Here's Rudolph. A short one there to Fryermuth. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here is third and quite a ways. Hey man, hey man. Watch the boot, watch the boot. 
A give to Harris. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Steelers send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be a 41-yard punt, give him five on the return. And the Bills are going to take over in great position here for the first and ten. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They have been red hot, sometimes white hot here in this first half. They're just looking to add to that total right now. And this has to serve as a reminder to myself because so many times I get wrapped up in the play calling, how they've sequenced things, how it's run. But you know, at the end of the day, it's still execution. Those guys out on the field, and right now they are locked in and really looking good. They'll try to continue to be locked in here as we get ready to approach halftime. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. Allen. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Looking to throw. Allen. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Second and ten. Again, they'll throw with Allen. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. T.J. Watt, the all-pro, in there to take him down. I think a lot of time when we see a sack, you say, well, you blame it on the offensive line, the quarterback. But here, maybe you just tip your hat to the defender. What a play. Yeah, and I think sometimes they just get a sense of the play before the ball's even snapped. Kind of like a sprinter anticipating the gun in a race. They're off, and guess what? The quarterback's down. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it, so on comes the field goal unit. The kick by Bass is good, and the Bills will add on to their lead. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw some strong work from James Cook in that first half. 
He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Bills with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Bills offense set to take over to begin quarter number three. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. And yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. This is second and eight. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's third and six. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And a loose football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. So certainly not at all what you're looking for here to start the third quarter. A fumble on their opening drive. Not at all. You're exactly right about that because this had a chance to be the drive to put everything away. A touchdown here. That might have put everything out of reach for them. They definitely handed out a lifeline to the defense on that play. Now a first down carry for Harris. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Rudolph looking to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. They'll run it. Warren and the big boys up front. They're going to stop him right at the line. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Throwing on third down, here's Rudolph. 
And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Well, partner, given where that drive started, that's an excellent job defensively to force them into fourth down. Now Chris Boswell for the Steelers' field goal try. From the left hash, this from 34. Boswell's kick is good, and that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. the successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. On the return, Deontay Hardy. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time they coughed it up led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when oh. they only gave up the field goal <laughs> and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think Coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Now a give running right, it's Cook. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Third and three. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. T.J. Watt able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And we all know how talented this guy is. He's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. Here's Sam Martin now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. And you start to think if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. First and 10, Rudolph. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. 
Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now a run with Warren. They'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now Rudolph. That went down the field for Fryermuth. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jordan Poyer. And the Bills are going to take possession here as they got it at their own four-yard line. Now, I guess we're at the point of the game where they do need to open up the playbook a little bit, start to take some chances down the field, but that one did not go as planned. Yeah, these guys need something good to go their way, and they took an opportunity to take that shot there. But obviously, that's not going to help. A tough play for them as they're trying to make their way back. They start the drive with Cook. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Second and five. Allen now looks to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, Parker. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Throwing now is Allen. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Cook up the gut. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Allen running the option to the left. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the lot of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Now the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Big strides, look at him go. And finally taken down at the 20-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 58 yards. Boy, this has just been an offensive clinic. It's seemingly been one big play after another, after another, and add this one onto the list. When you can bite off more than half the field on one play, <laughs> things are definitely working in your favor. So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. Back to throw, Allen. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. 
He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. Looking to throw. Allen. This is caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. From the two now, second and goal. Murray will take this over the line. Touchdown, Buffalo. And just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in and have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Bass on for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. But it's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnovers. The turnover on the last drive, they had the issue in the first half as well, and that's really... Unfortunately for them, helped to put this game out of reach. And you know they won't want to admit it to themselves, but we know that winning the game is pretty much out of the picture now. So their bottom line is how do they play a clean game the rest of this one, right? Take care of the football, no more turnovers, and see how that works. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's Rudolph now on second down. And quickly into the hands of Robinson. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 11 yards for number 11. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, it's Rudolph. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. And Oliver, that time, the one to get in there and bring him down. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there is just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out, not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Rudolph finds Pickens outright. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Rudolph looking to throw it. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. From the 50, it's Rudolph. Complete, it's Johnson. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. So first and 10 now from the 30. Harris running straight ahead to the 27 yard line. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multi-dimensional in this one, haven't they partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. Again, it's Harris on second down. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Rudolph now to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. He's up now to 80 yards receiving in the ball game, And he's got a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They'll look to throw. Got his man, it's Warren. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. Uh, despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there. In this passing game, it just can't get off the ground. In that play, it wound up losing yardage. So maybe just a momentary setback on what's been a great drive so far, but second and 13 here. Now Harris. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gate of three. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The offense on third. They've converted five times on their many chances thus far. This is third and ten. They'll set up to throw. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Allen Robinson. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers get a bit closer. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that win, C.D., and well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because 
He certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us, because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. well now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Bills offense back out onto the field. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to push any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On second down, Cook. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Here's Allen to throw it. He's got his target. That's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Allen and Knox teaming up there for Buffalo first down. But normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack. But you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. First down, here's the run with Cook. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself. And that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Here's Cook again. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Well, yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. Check 
They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Ball at the 26, second and seven. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. To the air, Allen. That is caught, and they'll get this down to the 10. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives them a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? now on first down and complete right side to Cook and he's brought down but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space a gain of seven that time second goal and good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block that might set your man free and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively or it could have gone for more so the ball position now at the three here's second and goal Escaping the pressure right. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. From the gun, it's Allen. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from two yards out as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. 
Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Rudolph. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Johnson. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first down, Rudolph. That swung out wide to Harris. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. You got the big lead defensively. I'm willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the 44-yard line here, second and three. Back to throw, Rudolph. Open man there is Darnell Washington. First target, first catch, and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. Rudolph throwing again. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And he is going to score. It's a pick six and a Bills touchdown. Well, this one was already ugly, and now it's just kind of becoming a feast on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, partner, this is a unit that knows they've got this game in the bag with this huge lead, and it's going to drive their coaches crazy because they're telling them, play it straight, do all the right things. But these guys are going to be freewheeling now. All of them are going to take chances, and that one pays off with an INT and a return for six. Here's Bass now for the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Steelers ready for their next possession. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. Rudolph going to lead the Steelers up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. A short one there to Fryermuth. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll make it second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. Here's a second and eight. They'll look to throw here. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see him drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. Rudolph going to throw on third and one. 
It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. But you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. Now Rudolph on first down. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. That's Gregory Rousseau getting in there to bring him down. Talk about two sides of the ball across purposes because mercifully this game's almost over for the offense, but the defense, they still want to get a few shots in. Up front seven, they've loved this ball game. They've been able to pad their stats and maybe some backups can get in and get a sack as well. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Here's Rudolph. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And the Bills getting set to go. Well, we've reached... Well, we've reached the stage where it's a it's a mere formality at this point. They've got the comfortable lead. We know what the outcome is going to be. I guess the only question is, do they want to put more points on the board before the final gun? Well, I certainly hope not. And I'm being selfish here because you and I have flights to catch. Let's go ahead and finish this one off, guys. <laughs> You've taken care of business. Let's close it out. And you and I, let's get to the airport. 64 yards for him on the ground now on 18 carries. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Again, it's Cook, and he's going to have a Bills first down. His good running gets him to about the 44. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. You just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss.
Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. in prime time this offense they gave the nation quite a show putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them and Brandon I think it's as simple as this some players some teams they're just meant for the big stage and when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly they show up and they show out For Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew, I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.